Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, Lauren yeah. here. Yes. Uh, good yes. morning, sir. Yes. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all on behalf of Binos. Today we have organized a webinar on the topic Learn Marketing Sizing for Startups. To, for, today the speaker is uh, Mr. Vignesh Raja, who is uh, who who's, who did his MSc and MBA at Bits Pilani and also has a handful of experience in manufacturing industry, e-commerce, and he's also a sister, uh, seasoned business research analytics and consulting professional. We welcome you, sir. Hey, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Uh, I hope I'm audible, loud and clear. Yes, sir. Great. Just give me a minute. I'm going to be starting to share uh, the screen and then we'll get going. Um, and uh, I, I can see that, you know, there are participants joining in. Probably we'll just give it a minute and then I'll, I'll start to share. So in the meantime, uh, if we can hear from people on the nature of uh, uh, business in terms of what uh, industry you guys are working on, you can just leave it in the chat box. It will be uh, good to see if I can bring some kind of a correlation for discussion purpose. And also um, what kind of business model you operate, whether it's a B2B or B2C as well. That would be quite interesting to note. And uh, with that, let me quickly get started. I will put my screen on share and we'll keep going with it. Uh, and uh, I would also love to hear if we have some participants who attended the the earlier session on the market intelligence. Uh, I uh, typically see that uh, this is an uh, extension of that particular uh, discussion. So, okay, great. Uh, I can see the details here. Uh, hi, Sri. I can see that you're in healthcare, B2B, B2C, Hridesh, uh, food processing, Sachin, B2B. Uh, Babesh for tech, okay. Manmohan is in e commerce, Karthik, B2P entertainment media, great. And uh, Jotsna is in food products, B2B, B2C. Uh, Dr. Jyoti is in food, health, and wellness. Matthew Joseph is in uh, uh, travel, interesting and uh, very interesting. Great. Now I, I, I can see that uh, there is a lot of very, very interesting. Uh, nature of business uh, we are looking to see. I'll get going with my uh, screen and I'd love to uh, interact along the way. Uh, and as always in every uh, bit of my discussions, I will try to keep it as interactive as possible and uh, we could have uh, engaging discussion on that front. Um, please confirm if my screen is uh, visible. Yeah, your screen is visible. Oh, uh, yeah, is my screen as well visible? Can someone confirm? Yes, we can see your yep. presentation. Great, great, great. So let me get uh, moving on to the discussion points. So uh, as you can see in the introduction or the agenda itself, we'll typically uh, cover the importance of the market sizing and move on to the uh, TAM Samsung, uh, which I'm sure most of you have already worked on. And also the I, I will present the market sizing methodologies, which I think will be quite useful. And lastly, I will also share some interesting uh, tips and tools on ascertaining the market size uh, for your respective industries. So it's not going to be a very straightforward approach, but uh, I can definitely give some pointers, which will definitely be useful to you. Uh, okay, yeah, this is exactly the, the topic which we had wanted to showcase. Uh, let me get started. Um, Okay, so I would say that this is again an extension of the market analysis itself, and it's very important that you understand the markets, products, industries, customers, competition, and vendors uh, likewise, likewise. And uh, on that same note, uh, I would understand that each of you uh, will agree that the basic idea about you understanding the market analysis or the market sizing itself is to understand more on your who your customers are, uh, how are they uh, faring, 
well, and uh, if you can understand your customers better and it's also important that you understand uh, this in terms of the quantified number so that you can achieve more growth in terms of acquiring new customers and also identifying new business opportunities and uh, most importantly uh, the market size is a very very important metric uh, when you provide uh, a realistic or aggressive target for your sales teams uh, which means it's going to be very useful towards your business planning activities and uh, it's going to be very useful towards your business expansion plans and i'm very sure uh, this is a data point which uh, every investor while on one side we have startups and entrepreneurs looking to use uh, this data to grow their business on the other side of the spectrum you have the investors who are looking to see if uh, uh, how the market is growing and is this a market i want to invest my money in and uh, since we have already taken this particular entire aspect on market intelligence earlier uh, we will touch upon the specific area of uh, the market sizing and forecast um, and you can see that you know like it's very important that you understand that where exactly the the market um, uh, uh, sizing features at all you can see you can see that uh, within the the quantitative uh, framework the market intelligence is on top and then you have the market understanding and within which uh, you have market insight and then you have the market size and forecast. So uh, I deliberately added this forecast element because um, I'm very sure you will also agree and understand that uh, every investor who uh, looks at the market size uh, as it stands, they would also like to see how the market uh, growth is primed for in the future. So which is where I would say that the market sizing and forecast go hand in hand uh, because uh, if you if you look at any particular business uh, every investor is there for uh, investing for a business today but they are looking for uh, achieving returns uh, on the business uh, uh, which it makes in the future so which is where the forecast becomes a very very important metric here uh, okay so let me let me specifically showcase on uh, the importance of market size itself. Uh, I, I think this is again a very, very fundamental point. It has a very direct implication on the revenues and the economies of scale, the way in which the, the, the companies uh, behave, the way in which the industry behaves and the potential of uh, a particular company to achieve excellence in the future. So, which means a simple example is if it's a large market, if it's a huge market, there is uh, an automatically a higher potential of sales and there is a higher potential of revenue as well. So as a classic example I'd like to offer here is many instances you think that, you know, like, okay, e-commerce, uh, would I want to step in? So, but which is where e-commerce, if you notice, you see that a lot of companies keep stepping onto this particular bandwagon. The reason being it's a growing market and the, which means uh, it's a, a lot many more companies can participate in that journey itself. So uh, just remember higher uh, or larger the market size, higher your potential and better is your propensity to convince your investor. Uh, I'm, I hope you're able to relate with this element. Just remember higher market size, higher is the potential uh, for you to, uh, uh, you know, like uh, get funded typically. So that's the correlation I want to bring in here. And uh, another important metric is uh, obviously to achieve, to understand the market uh, share, market size is very important. How would you even say that, you know, you are going to achieve 20% of the market or you're going to be achieving 50% of the market. So which is where to even to arrive at the market share, the market size number is going to be a very, very important point. And here again, you may understand, you may ask why, what's the relevance here? You can see that higher the market share or the better you are with regard to the competition, it allows companies or firms to influence the market and achieve high, higher economies of scale. And 
Likewise, the third other important uh, metric I want to bring here is the it's it gives a very easy ability ability to measure uh, the rate of return. Uh, if you if you notice <coughs> when the cost to enter to the market is higher, then a lot of companies are re uh, reluctant. And when such a thing happens, uh, the the investors are also not going to be up for it. So that you can see that there's a direct correlation on that front as well. <clears throat> and lastly, it impacts the way the competition behaves. Uh, an instance I would like to propagate here is uh, if it's a mass market, you have high competition. If it's a niche market, you don't necessarily have a high, uh, uh, it's, it's more uh, likely to be a low competition there. So, which is where you, you see that uh, uh, in, in the case of market, I mean, mass market, there uh, it's bound to have a larger market, uh, uh, you know, competition and a uh, lot many companies are ready to invest there as well. Uh, so, which is where sometimes when you see that you're focusing on a very niche segment or sometimes you would have seen instances where companies say that, uh, oh, you know, that's great, but uh, we are not too comfortable. Or probably investors say that they're not quite comfortable with that particular uh, exercise because they feel that uh, uh, even if there is a higher competition, that's it's going to be easier for them because the market size or the potential for them for the future is going to be high. So, um, uh, so this is what I wanted to quickly bring on the importance of the market sizing here. Uh, are there any specific thoughts? Would you would you guys have any thoughts to share uh, specifically on this? Because I understand that some of you have been uh, doing in varied uh, sets of business. Have you had any uh, views or input from the market? Because like you said, uh, I'd love to hear some pointers from you. Uh, okay, I can see a question from Nitin and I'll take it up right away. Should we select small and niche market with low competition or uh, see, I, I would say it's, uh, it's always going to be a challenging point, uh, but like I said, it's, it's completely up to you. Most important thing is where do you fit in? What is your USP? So uh, it's going to be a very straightforward point that if it's going to be a niche market, uh, the margin which you get will be uh, better uh, because it's going to be uh, less competition. But like I said, the larger market will uh, have more number of investors ready into it. But it does not mean that you have to go behind that particular space. Uh, try to see what kind of product you're building. Who are your customers going to be? Why would uh, customers or uh, customers will, I mean, customers be required to take your product? I think uh, do not worry about this particular element of choice between mark, I mean uh, a small niche market versus uh, uh, the uh, you know a high uh, competition market. Basic idea is how I mean let, let's assume so Nitin let's assume that you are going to be still focusing on only a niche market. Uh, the most important question you will have to address and understand is how are you going to convince the customer. Uh, sorry, the investor saying that it may be a niche market, but uh, if you are going to be uh, uh, propagating the idea that the market will probably change, the industry dynamic will change, uh, where this has potential to become <clears throat> going a little mainstream in the future, possibly you stand a better chance. So I, I would not want to influence your idea and thought process, but <clears throat> look at what uh, points uh, which would be more appropriate to you. I hope that addresses your question there, Nitin. Uh, Sandeep, your question, how do you define your market? Uh, how deep should you do? Uh, uh, great, uh, nice uh, question there, Sandeep. Uh, I think this is a very, very important point. Hold on to this. I will uh, come down uh, when we take up the uh, specific segmentation point. Uh, this is a very, very important uh, point you bring in. Uh, for the benefit of people here. So Sandeep had asked for this question on how would you define your market and how deep should you delve into defining it? And I think this is where uh, you you have a, a concept of uh, your TAM SOM SAM. And on that and over, I mean, that is just one part of it, but the, the way in which you classify your market segment is going to help in the way investors see your product. Uh, because in your case, uh, Sandeep, yes, the way in which you position or probably uh, segment the product is going to be challenging. Would you want to classify your product as a kid's service range or a, a card game specifically is going to be a specific point? Uh, 
Okay, so uh, Sandeep, on your question, I will come back with some specific examples as we talk through the discussion. I can see another follow-up question with from Sachin. Uh, product market fit. Uh, okay, I think your question is a little basic in that front. Which stage should come first? Uh, market fit or the TAM or Samsung? Okay, I will, uh, Sachin, uh, hold on with this question. I will address it towards our discussion points. Great, thanks guys, thanks for each of your questions. And I'm hoping I'll be, we'll be able to address all of these questions uh, through the day today. Let me move on to the, uh, the TAM, SOM, SA, sorry, uh, SAM and SOM itself. Uh, so uh, if you look at TAM, which is like, you know, the total addressable market, so this is the, the larger market itself. So uh, if you, I mean, uh, uh, I will probably try to give some uh, aspect of the examples itself. Um, let me take a classic case of uh, a car. So if you were to uh, say that, you know, you're looking to introduce a car, uh, uh, then you would have to identify the passenger vehicle car uh, or the passenger vehicles in the Indian market. That would be the TAM here or the total addressable market here. And then, uh, you uh, you you focus on uh, the serviceable available market, which is where you will focus on which particular category. Is it going to be uh, SUV or uh, you know MV, MUV? What kind of passenger vehicle are you going to be focusing on? So that is the specific one. And the serviceable obtainable market is. Let's assume that you're going to be, you're going to be focusing on an SUV. I mean, that's the particular product you're going to be launching in the market. Uh, which particular region are you going to introduce? I'm very sure, um, uh, I mean, we as entrepreneurs uh, will not want to launch Pan India directly, right? So you will probably focus on, I'll say, uh, a South Zone or probably uh, South India or probably a North India or West or East. So which means that becomes your serviceable, obtainable market. So you can see that big funnel here. You can see uh, the total addressable market here. If you look at uh, the, the passenger vehicles as one big segment, and then uh, under that, whether it is a SUV uh, or MUV or whichever, uh, or hatchback or whichever category of car uh, which comes in. And subsequently, the last bit uh, within that, where, which region? So many in many instances, people, we uh, uh, talk about, uh, this pilot, right, where they say, okay, great, all that is fine. So the market is huge, uh, the, the serviceable and available market also is great, but how much are you likely to get? So I think the key here is <clears throat> you may have very interesting metrics or high numbers for each of these, but uh, every investor uh, who are going to be looking at your business plan are going to be looking at some. So which is your, how much are you going to get to me or how much are you going to generate business in the short to medium term? In fact, ID needs just a short term because this is more uh, proof of the pudding. So this is more about uh, how effective are you going to be? So if you're going to be effective in a small subset of a region, a small uh, 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 you know, a location, you are going to be uh, more uh, amenable to grow to a larger segment. So I think that's the basic question here. So uh, now again, coming back to Sachin's question, uh, so Sachin, each of these data points are important. So uh, coming back to your question, each of your data points are important because as an investor, they would want to know uh, how big the market is and which one is it. But subsequently, they are only going to be focusing. So if I am an investor, I will only focus on how much, how much is serviceable, uh, uh, obtainable. That's, that's where my eye will go directly into. I hope I address your question there. Uh, but like I said, it will definitely be very important that you get uh, 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 the other details uh, right as well. Uh, I mean, I, I hope that was uh, the question you intended to ask Sachin. If not, please open up and uh, I, I'd love to hear more on that. Uh, Arun, uh, yes, Arun has a question. Can we include international potential also in time? Yes, provided you have a plan for it. Provided um, you are, inter I mean, launching the product in the international market. The, I mean, um, uh, or uh, so in fact, on a contrary, if your product happens to be a niche segment, you may want to position it that way because that's another classic case. Uh, because sometimes I, I hear from people that, you know, this is a great product, but uh, the product is not necessarily big in India as yet. So which is where you may want to smartly 
uh, focus on uh, bringing that TAM here uh, uh, and give a comparative view on the product's potential in national markets and then give a, a glimpse of it. Because uh, if you look at many instances, uh, sometimes uh, our customers are not introduced to that particular idea. But with change, it's possible that there can be uh, a shift in the way consumer behavior works. So uh, Arun, uh, like he said, um, as long as you have a justification for it, it's going to be useful. Uh, I mean, but having said that, if your product is going to be for the Indian market short term, may not necessarily be your TAM there, uh, but you can add it as an addendum, or probably you can say that, you know, uh, in the international markets or in the developed markets, uh, it's really going great. And you foresee that there are certain trends which are observed, which will play a role in terms of shifting the market in the Indian uh, markets as well. Uh, is that fine, Arun? I hope uh, that was useful to you. Uh, okay, so Sanjeev has some questions on, yes, I think those are going to be very specialized data points, but we will come down to that. We will come down to that, uh, Sanjeev. Uh, thanks for your question. So you wanted some specific details on uh, Ayurvedic market. Uh, I, will, I will come down to that. Uh, okay, so I hope the concept of Tam Som Sam, uh, sorry, Tam Sam Som is uh, simple. I have, uh, oh, I have Ramya's question. Okay, uh, explain the example of a startup and how did they come up with their uh, Tam Sam Som. Uh, I would love to do it, uh, Ramya, but I, I'm afraid I will skittle the plan. Uh, Ramya, we'll do this. I'll proceed ahead with the discussions. I'm sure we may have some time towards the end. I will come down to that with some specific examples. Is that fine? Because I'm a little concerned and worried that I'll not be able to share some additional information uh, which may be useful. So thanks, thanks, Ramya. Uh, let's discuss further. I did mention to you at uh, the earlier slides is, as, as well that the, uh, the growth rate and forecast are equally important because just remember that the market, as far as the market sizing, uh, the investors do not look at the data only as uh, the market size as a standalone data. They are looking to see how the market is going to grow in the future. And everyone will be uh, great to see some fanciful number today, 2020, 2022, 2025. But what's going to be uh, a game changer is, uh, uh, what's going to be the game changer is, how is it likely to uh, move for the future? Is there a potential? Is it a growing market? Uh, and coming to the growth numbers, uh, I would say uh, in the in the international context, anything about one to two percent is a positive number. In the Indian markets, uh, five to seven is a reasonable number. And if it's a, a very good and attractive market segment, you can easily see uh, upwards of ten to twelve or twelve to fifteen percentage as well. So I've presented the CGR formula here. Uh, what it means here is the future value, which is the uh, the forecast value and the starting. So which means here you will have uh, the 20, uh, let's say 2016, or sorry, 2025 uh, uh, market size divided by the 2021 or the current market size to number of years. Um, uh, how many years? What what number of years have passed? Minus one. I mean, it's a typical formula. I, I, I don't want to, you know, really deliberate on it. But the simple point I'm trying to stress here is uh, the importance of the, the growth rate or the compounded annual growth rate. So that's a specific point I wanted to showcase. Uh, uh, Sachin, I will, uh, so, Sachin, I saw your question um, on the SOM part. Um, I will I will come back on it. Uh, uh, the basic idea is it, it largely uh, uh, it's more on the quantitative part. Um, on the market uh, sizing, I will come down to it, and there are some data points I should be able to showcase to you. Uh, I hope we are fairly on track with whatever we have covered so far. Let me subsequently move on to the other areas on the market sizing itself. Uh, for starters, for starters. Uh, I'm, I'm very sure each of you have looked at these kind of market research reports. Uh, I've just picked something from the data, like say the Indian retail industry is blah, 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 growing at $1.1 trillion or probably the 76.87 crores. And so you, you can see that 
this is a kind of data you typically see in the newspapers or probably the business magazines, wherever. And uh, the important point I want to showcase is what is the important uh, or the key numbers which are very important. Uh, when you look at quantifying market sizes itself, there are two fundamental ways by which you can do it. Uh, by sales value, which is the total uh, size, the market size, by uh, uh, you know uh, value, or probably by the unit shipments, which is the volume. So I would say fundamentally, these are the two different ways by which you can do it. And largely, these are uh, more useful for B2B companies, which is what I have generally observed in the market. Coming to the uh, number of customers, this is another interesting metric, uh, especially with a lot of uh, you know, B2C um, uh, companies coming to Fora. Uh, the number of customers comes to be a very interesting metric or data point, I would say. So in a, in a very, very simple nutshell, I would say that these are the, the typical uh, data points which will have to be, uh, you know, like ready or present. So one, you can see that the market size uh, by revenues, so-and-so, probably the market size by volume. The only challenge when you present by value is the average pricing is uh, something which you have to be a little watchful on. Uh, I will come down to different ways by which you can arrive at market sizing itself. So let me move on to the subsequent slide. Uh, okay, so uh, I hope you can see this particular slide here. Uh, you can see, so I, I know some of you were asking some different questions on how you go about you know, arriving in market size or whatnot. Uh, I hope this particular slide will typically try to address some of your questions and we can always look to see if we can uh, discuss further on that. So uh, the first easier way by which you can do is uh, you can look at number of customers in the market and you you can look at average revenue per customer per year. So this is a, a, a so Chitra, I'm not too sure, but yeah, we'll look into it. Uh, yeah, so let me come back to it. So we're looking at the market sizing fundamentals. One, when you look at the customers, you can always begin with the customers. Uh, who are your customers? And uh, how many customers are there in the market? So, and one more thing I would like to uh, clarify here is when I'm referring, I mean, this particular slide is completely about uh, the TAM, right? And we had TAM, Samsung, and all this data point is for the total market size. And uh, with regard to your SAM and SOM, all those are the market penetration, where um, uh, it, it's a subset of the larger market. I hope I'm clear. I'm making clear uh, on that bit. Uh, but further, if you still have any question, please feel free to reach out to me. So start with, I mean, the first is about a very simple point. How many uh, number of customers are there potentially in the market? And then what is the average revenue per customer per year? So this is one classic way by which the total market can be achieved. <clears throat> Other can be about the competition where you can, you can, you can actually uh, sum, uh, you can take a sum total of all the competitors uh, in the market. So uh, let me take a simple example. If I were to arrive at uh, the, uh, uh, let's say, uh, branded uh, uh, toothpaste market or probably a toothbrush market, what I would do is I'll take all the companies, uh, whether it is Anchor or uh, Procter & Gamble or Unilever, I'll take all these specific companies and then add the revenues for that particular segment or uh, companies and then come out with the market numbers. So this is one different, one specific way I can look into it. The only challenge which will happen is uh, uh, these companies may not typically provide uh, the revenues by products always. So which is where the question on segment becomes challenging. So uh, uh, because if you look at uh, Hindustan Unilever or product, uh, Procter & Gamble, they uh, do not necessarily provide by uh, a product or product category, right? Or probably they give it as a business, uh, uh, as, a, as a business division, which is what makes this exercise a little tougher. But having said that, there are some workarounds on that. You can you can look at the company's annual report, the quarterly report, financial reports, and uh, you can look at the uh, arriving at certain metrics. But the basic idea is you can, I mean, this is one particular metric you can look to arrive at the, uh, from, from the, uh, the competition approach. So where it becomes a, uh, uh, you know, like a bottom up typically. The other aspect is about starting with the users where you can take the number of users in the market by number of users per customer 
and you can take a average revenue. So that also is another metric you may want to do. Uh, another aspect you can also look to do is a correlated market. So what I mean here by a correlated market is sometimes you may not necessarily have the specific one to be considered, which is where you may want to take uh, that as a specific example here. So this is a, a particular bit uh, you may want to consider. Let me also uh, uh, stop my screen and uh, share something about the segment itself, because uh, uh, when you talk about the segment, it becomes all the more important because sometime uh, back one of you, one of you and I actually asked that question on uh, how do you identify, you know, the market segment specifically and whatnot. Let me let me quickly showcase uh, one data point which will be uh, useful to you. Just give me a minute. I'm going to be sharing uh, the screen. There is a very interesting uh, uh, data which I wanted to showcase. Uh, have you guys heard about NIC, NIC, NIC code? Uh, I'm looking to share the screen here now. Is the screen visible? Vignesh, one, one question. Yeah, sure. Now in the previous slide, you know, mm -hmm. in, the, in the third point, you said start with the users. Correct. Okay. A total number of users uh, uh, per customer divided by number of users per customer into average revenue. So, do you mean to say that this is for a particular company, or, or is that data also available that you know, for for maybe some other company, this is the uh, uh, number of users per customer? Like, how, how, I mean, what can can you provide some details on that? Sure, sure. I can I can do that. I can do that. Uh, let me quickly complete this and I'll come back on this. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, just give me one minute. I'll, I'll share and I'll come back on that. Uh, is this screen visible? Uh, the NIC? Yes. Yeah. So uh, you can see that this is a very interesting uh, data point and uh, this is a, a good data which you can use to arrive at the market metrics itself. Uh, just give me one minute. I think I've stopped sharing inevitably. I hope you're able to see it now. I'll I'll share the link also, uh, Sandeep. Yeah, one second. Uh, this data you can actually uh, just give me a minute. I'll probably share the link also. Uh, but for now, uh, this is about the economic activity and this is the national industry classification. So this data, I mean, don't worry about this year. Uh, it does not, I mean, it's the updated, it's the current data. Yeah, you don't have to think that, you know, like it's outdated and whatnot. So what typically happens in this particular uh, thing is it's, it says about the industry itself. Uh, so here, let me let me showcase some details. Furthermore, so you can see you can see that uh, uh, you can see the different classifications which are presented here. I'm trying to take some example. Uh, is this visible now? You can see this, right? Manufacturing, manufacturing of textiles and whatnot. So uh, this is where you have this the details about broad structure and detailed structure. So uh, the reason, yeah, uh, is this is this visible now? Yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks. I think that's the right one. I think uh, he's just shared it. Kanan has just shared it. That's right. So <clears throat> uh, you can see that the data points are presented here. So uh, if you were to look at your uh, TAM, you can probably, uh, or the keywords typically, uh, you may want to uh, get or look at these metrics or names to come out with it. So for instance, uh, some, some, someone, let me, let me tell you, I think one of you were asking about uh, Ayurvedic, right? Who was it? I, uh, I think it was Sanjeev, right? So Sanjeev was asking about Ayurveda. So now I'm going to be doing a check on Ayurveda. Is the screen visible guys now? 
so here here i can actually see what kind of classification uh, is featured under ayurveda so i can see that uh, manufacture i mean uh, the ayurveda itself is classified under botanicals right so which means many times you don't have to actually look for uh, uh, indian ayurvedic products or ayurvedic market so you can probably look for indian botanical extracts as a product and then look at how uh, uh, trying to focus on the segmentation does that make sense uh, sanjeev uh, are you able to get this particular point on it so so uh, again like i said for all other people as well irrespective of your industry or segment see the beauty of this particular document is uh, it's for everyone it's for uh, the entire economic activities so which means whether it's a car whether it is a manufacturer it's a service solution uh, i saw that a lot of people were in edtech industry or healthcare and health tech and what not so all of these are classified under this as well so if i were to look at something on education i will definitely find something on education as well so here i can go further or deep dive uh, understanding more on primary education sec secondary education or higher education and what not so here it gives some very interesting take or perspective on that as well so uh, uh, let's see i think there there was another question related question on games as well right i think one of you were asking about uh, kids games i remember that so uh, that is again another interesting point on how so here you can see manufacture of plastic products and so which means if you feel if you feel that uh, uh, this data is going to be uh, uh, you know like you, would, you wouldn't want to position it as um, a kids product you may want to showcase this as a uh plastic uh, games and toys as well so i think it's completely fine so it's it's up to you on in what kind of classification you want to showcase and you can do it so uh akshay akshay jaykumar so i just mentioned that uh, there is uh, i mean this is the updated one and uh, there is no uh, you know like a newer version for it so uh, the 2008 edition so that's 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 what is the one which is used all across so uh, you can you you can be rest assured that you're not using any outdated data point is it fine okay uh, let me quickly come down to the slide and then i have to focus on a couple more points before i take up some more questions okay so uh, there are some fundamental questions which are very important so how big is uh, the size of the market product company so i think these are some very very fundamental questions you will end up answering for your investors and obviously it's for a reason because everyone is uh, clear that you know like uh, your market is uh, uh, i mean how big the market is and which product you're focusing on who your customers are. i think time and again uh, it it comes back to that central pivotal point um, because companies understand that as long as you know who your customers are from where you're going to be making money uh, thing is, uh, every other thing does not really matter and uh, obviously you need to have some view on the competition uh, because uh, understanding who your uh, main or core competitors are all, is very important and likewise there is also uh, the other uh, concept of indirect competition competitors because many times you only say that you know okay he is my uh, or like uh, a particular company is uh, the only competitor which i foresee but there may be another set of uh, industries or probably companies which are competing against you which probably are either overlooking and likewise uh, which which brings another question to the fora which means uh, in if your market uh, can focus on those industries as well it is a, another opportunity for you as well in the way you press sent to the masses uh i will want to showcase a little bit on how you can pick some additional data points so the subsequent slides i'm going to be giving some more perspectives on uh where and how you can go about getting market information or probably this market sizing information uh or these are industry associations these are industry bodies uh which provide some very interesting information um i'm i'm not too sure if you are all of you are aware on or 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 
um, uh, you know, uh, aware of uh, all of these or as many. In fact, I've just presented a portion of it. Apart from these, there are some more other industry associations as well. Um, in, in fact, uh, when Sanjeev asked me that particular question on uh, Ayurveda and or whatnot, I think there's another a related one on Ayurvedic as well. So, uh, in fact, uh, it comes under complementary medicines and you, you have specific industry bodies which are focused on uh, those industries as well. So uh, there are, I mean, I would say that you can go about uh, giving appropriate keywords and then you can get it for yourself. So I hope that should be a simple exercise. And apart from that, I also want to stress this point on uh, uh, the CII, the Confederation of Indian Industry. Uh, they provide some amazing set of uh, data which uh, which you tend to miss out time and again. Uh, oh yeah, thanks, thanks, Gaurav. Yes, uh, PSB CCI also is another uh, useful uh, portal which gives some very interesting uh, market information. FIKI, yes, they also provide some very interesting support and ASOCHAM as well. In fact, apart from these, there are a whole lot of other uh, regional chamber of commerce as well. So I know for sure uh, there is something which is called as a South Indian Chamber of Commerce. And then you have, uh, you know, like Hindustan Chamber of Commerce. So you have a lot of these chamber and body associations, which are equally important. And uh, coming to the, uh, the new age companies, the startups and whatnot, uh, you have uh, the ties of the world, right? Like you are uh, the industry entrepreneurs and all these people who provide uh, equally supportive environment for the, the, the community. And uh, I should not forget the NASCOMs of the world as well, because they also provide some very interesting uh, information, which is useful for uh, companies alike. Uh, uh, okay, so there, I just want to quickly dabble on this particular point on the secondary research databases. So uh, this is especially useful uh, to get some very high level market data information. The only challenge though is you'll have to look at two or three uh, aspects. Um, if you want a deep dive on any of these, uh, it's going to be expensive. And in fact, that report itself, the market research report itself, because these companies uh, provide uh, data or information uh, as a business. So which means it's going to be a little expensive, but if you think you can afford, you can, you can give it a try. But if not, you can look at the keywords these companies use. You can look at the segmentation which they do. You can look at what segment they include and what they exclude. You can look at who the competitions are according to them. You can look at uh, some specific inputs on the basis of the table of contents. Uh, maybe I'll uh, share something here, maybe which can be useful to some of you here. I will, I'll probably stop and share some details. Uh, is there any example we can consider? Uh, if not, I'll take uh, the example of uh, Ayurveda or probably any of these products as well. Just give me a minute, I'm going to be, uh, uh, I, I think it should be possible, Ajit, I'm not too sure. Uh, just give me a minute, guys, I'm going to be stopping and I'm going to be sharing some details on um, the, uh, let's, let's take Ayurveda industry in India and then I'm going to be uh, sharing it for you. Just give me one minute, guys. I'm going to be, I'm, I'm just trying to share uh, the screen and present it to you. Uh, just one minute. I've just taken the example of uh, uh, Ayurveda as an example, because one of you had requested for that data. Uh, I saw another question. Uh, can we test with an example? Just uh, SM, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not too sure I understand your question right. If you can clarify that, it would be great. Uh, in the meantime, I'm presenting the data here. Uh, I have just picked some data on uh, CII's data. So they have presented some details on Ayurvedic industry challenges and opportunities. So this is what I just wanted to present to you. And uh, there is some details. So, so, so the key here is, you, you see that CII has not done the study. CII themselves have taken some information from Exim. So which means all I'm trying to say is in the open market, there are some data which is available, which you'll have to go further, dig in deep and look for it. And within the Indian market. So here within the Indian herbal market as well, 
you have this data point which is presented. So all I'm trying to say is, and here when you look at uh, Kerala scenario, there, there is a data from Drug Manufacturer Association. So this is what I had been mentioning to you guys uh, a few minutes back on the importance of uh, industry associations itself. And uh, furthermore, I mean, like this is an example I wanted to showcase on the Ayurveda and whatnot. I'll just stop and share some other details uh, over here. Just uh, give me a minute. I'm going to be uh, resharing the screen and this time with an alternate data. So just one minute. Uh, this is a, a data from, I think, IM, IMARC Group, so which is a market research company. And uh, okay, is this, is this visible, guys? Can someone confirm? I, is it visible? Yeah, it's visible. Yeah, so here I have come down to IMARC Group. So it's a market research company. And then you can see that they present some details with regard to the market numbers itself, right? This is your TAM number. And uh, you can see, this is where I did mention to you. So here you get a high level data point, uh, but for to be very, very sure. Uh, and they, there is also some basic estimate on uh, what, what the market is likely to be in the future forecast as well. And obviously this being a report, they are not going to be uh, sharing the entire details and you'll have to ask for details. But the key here is uh, look at the table of contents. So the table of contents will definitely give some perspective on uh, the estimation here. So, uh, so you can see that uh, uh, how or like what are the markets? How do they segment the market? How do they focus on the market? What are the key factors? You typically see the PESEL analysis. You can see that, you know, how the market structure is done. So whether they include the healthcare product, is it is it included, excluded or whatnot? Probably here they are, they are including personal care products as well. And then they also include or probably share some details on organized and on unorganized market. And then this is where the landscape is. So all I'm trying to say is, uh, uh, there are some data which is available to some extent. The question is, to what extent this information is going to be available? Obviously, if you have to end up paying for this study, you're going to get some uh, a really uh, useful set of data. But having said this, uh, you have some kind of starting point on what uh, data is uh, there as well. And uh, what are the segments? So this is where I was telling about the segments. So you can see that. See, and one more important thing you have to understand this all these words are keywords all these are very very important keywords uh, th this will this will uh, impact the way you're going to be presenting uh, in the market because many inst many instances we take certain data for granted be very very watchful be very observant look at the keywords which are being used and uh, it would be it would be very very uh, useful for you to review and make use of it accordingly uh, let me let me come back to the screen and then discuss further so like i said um, you can possibly look to use uh, such uh, data points like i said the only challenge is uh, these are going to be expensive paid right so which is where it brings to the question of uh, okay great i'm a startup i don't have money or I, I don't have great uh, money with regard to data. So in fact, now I understand uh, the question from SM, right? So you were looking for uh, temporary staffing in India. So now um, uh, I will I will see what are the different ways by which you can arrive at the market or market data itself. So one I did uh, during the market sizing exercise itself, I said that you can look at the top down or the bottom up approach. When you look at the top down approach, uh, you look at uh, how big uh, the market is and who are the key competitors and then look at consolidating the market sizes itself. So, which means you can look at the revenues of different companies. Uh, obviously, uh, if as long as the company is publicly uh, listed, you will be able to find the market numbers. For all other private uh, companies, you will have to either take an estimate or you will have to look for uh, MCA data. I'm not too sure if you guys are aware of MCA. Uh, so any company in India, you can actually ask for MCA. So let me let me share. Just give me a minute. Uh, oh, one minute. One minute. So you can actually ask for uh, a request for MCA. So one minute. I, I'm not too sure if, if anyone here has actually tried it. Uh, so MCA is your Ministry of uh, Corporate Affairs. 
you can actually ask them for data, right? So you can actually say that, you know, I want to know the, uh, the uh, revenue of a listed company. You can actually uh, uh, list, you can, you can actually ask, ask the data, ask uh, the government and uh, they are obligated to give you. So it might uh, look a little weird for you, but then uh, there, this is a service which is available. So interestingly, in, in the international markets, it's much more easier but uh, within the Indian market also, this data is possible. This data, uh, you can actually ask for the NCA details. Thanks, uh, Garo. Yes, that's right. So you can ask for it. Uh, let, me, let me come back to my screen and then I'll, I'll uh, showcase a little bit further as well. <clears throat> Uh, okay, so this is one access, one one in, input you may want to use. Uh, how many of you have heard about this term, which is called as red herring draft report? Anyone here? Have you heard about red herring draft report? Oh, uh, great, uh, Gaurav, thanks a lot. I think that's a very uh, big initiative. So in terms of the support you offer on pro bono, so that'll be useful. Um, uh, oh, Suchitra, I saw your message just now. So, names of Indian companies that do. Uh, yes, there are a lot of companies here. I'll, I'll see if I can compile some list uh, with regard to uh, different industry sectors. So uh, interestingly, there are a lot of companies, small, big, medium scale and startups as well in market research and uh, some companies which focus only on separate uh, certain industries. So interestingly, uh, I know this particular company, uh, which uh, uh, first uh, MR, which, which actually focuses only on uh, uh, you know uh, 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 food, beverage, and ingredients. So uh, I mean, like there are there are just uh, a lot of uh, companies which provide. So Frost, Frost and Sullivan is another company which does. I'll I'll probably share a consolidated list at some point of time. I'll probably do that. Um, and okay, now back to my question. So uh, red herring draft reports. Can someone tell me here? Have you heard about what a red herring draft report is? Anyone, well, you can message or open up, talk, share. What is a red herring draft report? Anyone? No? Okay, great. Uh, uh, Sandeep, yes. Uh, Joseph, Matthew, yes, 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 yes. Thanks, Greg. So, uh, uh, any any company which goes for an IPO will have to uh, uh, share uh, details to the general public. And uh, can anyone tell me some company which um, has filed for IPO in recent times? Something in recent times in your sector. Anyone? Anyone? Anyone who's following the market and uh, is following any particular IPO? Delivery, okay. Okay, great. Uh, I can see as many of you. Delicious. Great, okay. Nice, 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 nice. I, I, I can see, I can hear as much um, interesting uh, uh, details uh, each of you are coming out with. Uh, 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 which particular category do you think, do you guys uh, want to go ahead with? Anyone, anyone, anyone has any particular um, uh, segment you want me to focus on? Healthcare, okay. Let's see, which was the company which went in IPO recently? A lot of companies are there. <clears throat> Any, anyone in healthcare which happened recently? Anyone? Okay, let's see. Uh, let's probably... Uh, Anup, alternate protein, yes, actually speaking, lots are there. Uh, okay, for the benefit of people here, I'm going to be sharing the screen here. Is it visible now? Is it visible? Yeah, it is visible. Yeah, so, so here you can see that uh, I'm presenting the uh, SEBI's uh, document in terms of uh, the details uh, on a particular. Uh, uh, so these are the. So in fact, we just uh, mentioned only a couple of them, right? Just look at all these companies. There are just amazing set of companies which are there. And uh, let's try to open up a couple of them. Maybe uh, let's take a pick. Any 
let's global health limited okay i'll just no i think this is still add and dump i'll uh, let's pick gemini edibles and oils okay i hope this is visible is it visible guys are you able to see the gemini edibles and fats what the name okay so uh, this is where i am and uh, there are specific places which i want you to focus on uh so this uh data the initial part of it is going to be completely on uh market numbers and management and audit and what not uh the specific place i want to focus on is the market numbers so when i look when you when you see the market numbers uh you will get to see this data point here you can uh, you can see the numbers in terms of uh the revenue. so these are their current business uh there is something which is called as a market number i i know whether it is not available here i think this is an add and dump so I, we need uh, we we should probably be looking for gemini's uh, original thing let me just give me a minute i'm going to be checking uh, the drhp just give me one minute guys i'm just trying to take the the appropriate one because what we picked was the add and dump it was not the uh, the complete one yeah can you see this now can you see the 381 page report uh is my, is it is it visible or should i stop and reshare it's visible yeah okay so uh within this particular format uh this is a standard template and format which is followed in any or every uh draft red herring prospectus uh and this is where uh, i want your attention to be the industry overview or our business and uh, the key regulations and policy so here the minute i touch industry overview it's going to be telling anything everything about the macroeconomic indicators and what uh, i mean by the macroeconomic indi indicators is uh, there is uh, going to be a comparison between the india and probably the at a global part and here they are presenting the the key aspects which uh, impact so here if you now now try to uh, understand or relate back to the key points we discussed during the um, the the market sizing exercise we had a few instances we picked in right so one we could have taken the uh, market uh, size on the basis of companies which are present the revenues the adding up or summation of all these uh, there is another where i can arrive at on the basis of total number of customers and then the average revenue right so here uh, the, all these are uh, data points by which i can use estimates and arrive at the market as well so you can see that uh, if uh, so so just just look at the example here this is a company which is focused on uh, edible oil so what does it mean so which means for anyone to invest in such a company it means that uh what will the edible oil market be in the future who is consuming this uh across india uh, i mean which are the companies which are focusing what are the factors which are impacting you can see which is where you can see the pre covid and post covid details the growth drivers as well all these play a very very important role on why the market grows or does not grow just give me one minute i'm sorry about it so uh, you can see that the urbanization so it means the urban population the more urban population increases the more the market is likely to grow so the, you can see that all these are metrics which is which is going to en enhance or impact the market you can see that the householder annual earning details so, so many times you may wonder why all these details are presented uh, it only goes to see that all these are factors which are in favor of uh, the packaged uh, product consumption and within that uh, where exactly does the edible oil come in so you can see this right this is where we are talking about the market size itself which is for the year 2015 and then we did talk about the future potential and then uh, the the cagr which is where i did mention to you about the uh, cumulative or 
compounded annual growth rate. So you can see that all these are interrelated, which is why I said that this is a CAGR or growth uh, data and forecast go hand in hand. Is this visible, guys? I hope you're able to see this. And see, look at look at this. Uh, this kind of report is actually openly available, free of cost. And most importantly, we don't even realize that this data is uh, available. So all it requires for you is uh, a look for uh, a, a data which is already there, and then go about doing your own specific set of research on compiling this. So in fact, sometime back, you were asking about from where. So uh, this could be your starting point. And then you can go about using your hypothesis, or you can do a little bit in terms of your segmentation, or you can focus on the, the way in which you would want to uh, uh, use it for your respective industries. And uh, here you can see, that, see the, the most important thing here is, uh, there is a, a, a humongous amount of data which is available free of cost and uh, many times we are not aware of it and which is what i want to present here so and uh, there is also a, a comparative element and one more thing i would like to or like you all to review is uh, this format itself is more like a tried and test tested format so in case you want to you know present it uh, to your investors you may also want to review a couple of these formats and use it for your own advantage as well and uh, the market size and market share by branded players and uh, uh, you can also, so there is also the other data on import, import market as well. Uh, does the import market play a role? And uh, so subsequently you can see for every other market. So you, you can see for uh, edible oil, you can see for sunflower oil, and then there's gonna be details presented all across. So the basic idea I want to showcase here is, uh, this is a very, very uh, useful information and you can use it. Uh, Archita, I think EV also should be possible. I will check and come back here. I think it should definitely be possible. Uh, so like I said, for all of you, uh, you should probably look it out. Just uh, give me some time. Probably I, I I will probably review and come back, but I'm very sure uh, you'll have to just look for, I mean, a simple example, uh, you can probably try uh, there. Um, uh, Archita is uh, just check, uh, uh, put in a Google search, like, you know, uh, electric vehicle, uh, uh, DRHP. I mean, I'm just trying to give the keyword itself so that you can probably look for it. Or you can actually look for uh, electric vehicle uh, space uh, PDF uh, market size. <laughs> so it's all about getting details, which is more appropriate. Uh, in fact, most, I mean, the, the specific point I want to reinforce here is there is a lot of uh, data which is available um, in the open source uh, and you don't have to actually worry about it. And yeah, so this is something I want to quickly showcase. Uh, yeah, this is the specific point we touched upon and this format remains the same. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, this I this is another data which is uh, very very underrated. Uh, how many of you have heard about this data dot geo dot in? Anyone? Anyone? Have you tried? Have you have you gone into it? Uh, uh, no. Uh, Archita, it is uh, DRHP. Uh, yeah, coming back to this, uh, any of you have tried data dot geo dot in? Anyone? Yes, sir. Uh, I've tried it. There's a lot of trade data there. Uh, uh, not just Export. trade, not just trade data. You will have more um, the economic uh, data as well. So, for instance, uh, population, uh, pollution, or probably the literacy. See, uh, you, you, there's a lot of economic or econometric data which is available, which we we uh, we probably overlook. So that's what I wanted to quickly showcase. So I I'm, I'm just quickly sharing the data here. Is this visible now? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, so here you can see that. Uh, just, just imagine. I'm very sure any or each of your startups will definitely be in any in in part of any of this, right? So, all you'll have to look for it is just check for check for data here. So, uh, I think someone had anything on transportation or probably uh, travel or tourism. So, you can probably just go into it and uh, look for the data point accordingly. Uh, so you can see that uh, there is a whole lot of data which is available and then you can go further. Uh, uh, sometimes um, there is, uh, the minute you go into it, the, it, it says that, you know, you will have to um, uh, sign up or register. Do not worry about it. Just, just sign for it. Just, uh, you know, like download and then it'll ask for some questions. So that's fine. If in case you're using it for your own purpose, you can actually just mention it as commercial academia business. That's fine. So don't think that, if I mention commercial, you will not get it. 
uh, you can you will very well uh, get the data. So don't worry about it and mention the details and you'll you'll definitely get it. So you will you will get it. So don't worry about it. You'll you'll definitely get it. So you'll get it. Uh, you'll get access to it. So you can see that the year wise data is actually I, I've actually got the data. So now I, I just want to reinforce the idea that there, there is a lot of useful data which can be uh, which you can leverage. Uh, many times we think that okay no 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 the data is protected data is not for us or uh, the, the 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 it is restricted. So is the screen visible now? Can you see the Excel sheet here? I don't know whether if my Excel sheet is visible. If not, I'll have to stop and reshare. Yeah, so is the screen visible? So I, I think what I had done was I picked the data on uh, PPP and uh, uh, data specific data points here. So um, yeah, correct. So yes, you are right. So that's another data point you can very well uh, look to use. And uh, just give me a minute. I'm going to be sharing my screen again. Okay, so like I said, the data.gov.in is also another interesting data point you may want to use. Uh, Google, like I said, there's nothing like your Google search. So if you want to effectively garner as much use case on the Google searches, uh, try to use the keywords appropriately. So I just mentioned uh, to Archita sometime back, uh, try to use the keywords very effectively. Uh, you can actually uh, use quotes. So for instance, if it is Ayurveda or Ayurvedic, medicine include ayurvedic medicine and then include it uh, enclose it in a coat or if it's electric vehicle electric vehicle included in a, in, i mean enclose it in a coat uh, or if you want this or this keyword search you can very well do it and you can also exclude what i mean to say is let's say you are trying to search for apple's mobile phones right you want to see what is the quantum of apple mobile phones sold across the world uh, you all of us know that apple is also a fruit uh, and you don't want apple's googles to search uh, send you search results on uh, uh, apple's fruits apple as a fruit you can actually do uh, minus uh, fruit and then do a search so it, it is a very very simple exercise you just have to mention you know minus fruit and then mention apple and automatically all your search results will only showcase apple mobile phone or the other apple products and services and sometimes if you're not aware of uh, what are the subsequent uh, keywords which follows it you can use star uh, it is a very useful a wild uh, character which you can use uh, for your benefit as well uh, so i I think I we have tried to address as much of it. Let me let me know if there's any specific questions. I, I know this uh, topic I can speak for hours together, and uh, I can always uh, take up some more questions. If there are any further questions, we'll probably uh, yeah. There is Shreel Deshmukh. Yes, uh, how we use. Uh, uh, so there is Shreel Deshmukh. What is your product category? If I may know, what is your product or industry? Uh, maybe if you can unmute and talk. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Laugh my library. So, um, okay. Hello. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, yeah. so, so, this is the approach which we have been trying to look at, mm -hmm. where uh, because, like, Finding TAM SAM SOM is something which is again dependent on secondary data and the market analysis which we do, right? Mm. And there are a lot of random data which is available. So, mm. like we got a suggestion that the bottom sub approach will give you a clear idea about your market sizing. Correct, 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 correct. So, so here, okay, let's look at it. So, there is also uh, to address your question. So, if you look at market uh, uh, sizing for your uh, <coughs> space uh, look at last mile delivery right so uh, look at uh, so so here what you will have to again ask or ask further is uh, when you look at last mile delivery uh, you can probably look at uh, courier service providers I, I don't know like you you have to look at some very crazy places look at uh, pin codes look at uh, post office 
look at a number of parcels delivered look at number of couriers delivered look, look at uh, the the transportation and look at i mean i think you have to uh, look at it from those aspects and then uh, focus on arriving at the uh, the market size so i think that is uh, what uh, we mean here by the bottom up approach right where um, the number of uh, 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 people using these services or probably number of products which are being delivered delivered every single day. Yeah. So it may be it may be a very very minute data and it's going to be very difficult for you. So which is where you use a mix of both uh, a top down and a bottom up. So bottom up you will pick some data points on that and uh, look at the top down. So on when you look at the top down approach, it's going to be uh, simple where you're going to be picking the revenue numbers of different companies. But mm -hmm. if you were to look at the the bigger courier people, let's say uh, spot on couriers or DHL or any of these companies try to uh, see if you can take some specific questions or you know like uh, data points from there and then see how you fit into that particular equation okay so I think that uh, that is what you I says you will you would probably have to work on so having both approach is something which you are suggesting, right? Yeah, you will have to definitely use a, use a mix of it, right? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, see, uh, with regard to triangulating the data, because uh, I have done at least 20 to 30, uh, you know, like market sizing, market research uh, reports where I've done a mix of B2B uh, market sizing and uh, where you have to do a lot of things. In fact, uh, uh, any particular market sizing itself, if you have to truly do it, uh, you will have to do a couple of things. One, uh, you will have to interact with different companies. So which is where, which, which is what we call as a primary research, right? You, we can probably do a um, uh, interaction. So let's say uh, we uh, interact with uh, companies, we interact with the sales people, interact with marketing people. And that's a specialty of these market research companies. So what does a market research company do? They say that I'm doing a study on a particular market. See, just imagine uh, in your case, the dairy shield, uh, if you are going to be speaking, uh, telling that, you know, I'm doing a market, uh, uh, research people are going to think that your data is going to be um, uh, used by competition which is why you're not going to get the data and which is where all the market research companies excel because they're going to say that you know what uh, as per market ethics i'm i'm doing a study or syndicated research or a study on uh, how big is the last mile delivery in india and for mm -hmm. which I'm interacting with as many people. And what we typically do is when we speak with uh, five to 10 people, we'd be able to be, I mean, get a, a, a pulse of the market because uh, one, there'll be a lot of uh, secondary research or metrics we focus on in terms of the top down terms of revenues. And uh, there is a lot of, uh, um, uh, you know, like say uh, estimations we go about doing it and then uh, pitch uh, present or ask these questions to people right you know um, mm -hmm. uh, okay you know what we noticed that your revenues uh, let's say a uh, thousand crore but however we wanted to uh, review and uh, ask you know like okay uh, confirm uh, the last mile that particular question would be probably 20 percent or 30 percent mm -hmm. and then you get the data so i i would say that these kind of market studies uh, mm -hmm. which are done by companies would take easily two to three months and that's what we do so we speak with suppliers we speak with manufacturers uh, we we speak with uh, the sales people we look at the market yeah, data yeah. and and then come out with the data so no that's what that's what i want to uh, tell you so i think there was a, some question in between so there is like you said so coming back to your question yes you will have to use a mix of it and uh, present your case appropriately is that okay sure yeah thank you so much yeah uh archita I, I saw I your good yeah, morning yeah. mr yeah. vignesh i have a question yes please a question i wanted to just uh, clarify more there is a portal uh, which i am forgetting where we can actually figure out then which product from India, uh, as per HS Sports, which product from India is going to which country and how much, and which product from India to coming to India, like export, import, both data we can get for particular product from or to particular country. There is a portal we can figure up. Can you just got it, got that? it, got it, got it, got it. So, um, okay, give me a minute. Let me see if I can share the screen for you. So, uh, Archita, if I am not mistaken, you're looking at um you're looking to understand the uh, import export data right yeah okay. for the particular yeah. product to the particular country give me a minute uh there is uh there is a website which is a good one i i, yeah. I can share that give me a minute i'm going to be sharing it for you uh have you heard about com trade it is something like trade but i just forgot because i, I 
<laughs> no, so Ishara, I'm, I'm, not, on it, yeah. I, you know, I'm sharing it here right now for the benefit yes. of all of you. Can you see this? US Comtrade. Comtrade is a database which is there. So is this visible, guys? Can someone yeah. confirm? So I think some other so government portal. Uh, government portal. Uh, no, Comtrade is something which is useful. <clears throat> uh, is is this the is okay? So here you look at the product. You can you need the HS code data. Mm -hmm. So this is one data you can see. There is another one which is called a Statista. Okay. Statista is another one which provides uh, statistics from across the world. So the only challenge is uh, they charge money. So yeah, you can see this, right? So Statista, you can still go ahead and create a free account. Is this visible, guys? I hope you're not yet. I can't see your screen. Uh -huh. One minute. I'm going to be... black screen so far. One minute. Is this visible? Yeah, it's visible now. Yeah, so you can see that uh, Statista is a data, uh, is a company. It's it it, it uh, provides some very interesting details all across different sectors. So here they provide for consumer goods, internet, media, retail, sports, technology, whatever. And here uh, they they provide for across different industries. You can create a free account and use it, uh, but yeah, you will not have as much details on uh, going to specifics. But yeah, this is a good yeah. start you can make on it. Yeah, sir, and I think the website that she was looking for is DGFT. Oh, is it okay? No, not I the DGFT. To... DGFT. Okay. There is some, uh, some other website where it is, it comes with a very thorough uh, Excel sheet kind of format. And it also shares which treaty is signed with which country with, between India and the country. Uh, is it Volza? Mm -hmm. Is it Volza? Not Volza. Okay. Um, there, there is another one which is called as uh, Austrade. Uh, it's not an Indian uh, portal. Austrade would be for Australia and India. Uh, uh, interestingly, Austrade actually provides some details on uh, not just uh, India, Australia, but for other countries as well. I'll just give a simple example okay. here. Uh, you will you will understand this. So you want to invest in Australia? Okay. Let's see. I'm going to be uh, investing, and then I can actually go ahead and. So here, yeah, so you can see about market profiles. So here I can go into the market profiles and I can look at different regions. See, the good part is I can see I'm here sitting in India. I can mm -hmm. understand uh, what's happening with uh, Russia. So uh, uh, these uh, uh, Austria also provide some very interesting details. And then they provide details on Russia. They provide deals on fact. They provide trade sheet and they provide fact sheet and whatnot. So about this, Russia. This, okay, that's yeah, great. yeah. I mean, so, so which means not just Russia, but almost all other different countries also. So you can see that you know, like all other different countries also, like China, Czechoslovakia, and uh, you know, like Chile and whatnot. So all I'm trying to say is that there are different uh, platforms or portals which are available. And uh, so this, actually speaking, this is meant for uh, Australian trade, but still, uh, they they provide some very interesting portal which is useful there. Actually, I wanted. I was trying to figure out the electric vehicle trade between India and South Africa. Okay, okay, okay. Interesting. Should be possible. Uh, see your inputs are very valuable, uh, Mr. Vignesh. I was, I was quite uh, enriched with the knowledge and the points which you have shared today. Thank you. Thanks no, for taking time for us. No, thanks, thanks, thanks a lot. It's indeed a pleasure and um, happy, uh, you know, if the, the, the data are useful, I mean, information is useful. Like I said, uh, on the market sizing, see market sizing, I think it's, you will have to go a little specific. The only challenge with market sizing itself is uh, you will have to, uh, the segmentation, I think the segmentation is a key word here. Uh, Sometimes we did discuss about uh, the passenger vehicle as an example, right? So um, if you look at any particular industry, the key is about identifying the industry, which sector which segment and then you'd be able to arrive at the market itself but keyword is again another interesting point you may want to focus on uh, so yeah, that you yeah. can get uh, the, the details accordingly sir uh, i have a question and uh, another uh, uh, in fact i'm sorry just before uh, i mean before i move out move to the next question i will uh, want to showcase another website which is useful also uh, this is a uh, are you able to see the screen now are you able to see this IBEF portal? Yes, sir. Uh, so IBEF also is a very interesting 
platform and portal here you get some very interesting details so here um, very similar to austrade this is india's brand equity foundation and they provide some very interesting market data uh, from india with regard to you know like uh, archita you were just asking about uh, electric vehicles sometime back right so let's see yeah. i'm sure that there should be some very interesting uh, detail let's see if there's anything on automotive and then i i remember that they have some auto components or automobiles and uh, they they provide uh, details on the sport whether which is your market uh, information they provide any report information and then they provide uh, some uh, a, a details on the market also so it, it is it is possible so let let me see if um, it should uh, there should be some very interesting detail which is present at your yeah so uh, let me see i think there were a couple more questions as well so um, uh, can i ask my question yes please uh, so uh, basically i belong to the plan based meat industry and uh, the data for that is uh, comparatively new and not concrete so what do you, what would you suggest in this case like how to research how to like find out the dam solvents um interestingly um uh, in uh, in one of the uh, recent engagements um there's a the the plant meat right so when you say plant meat it's a yes, vegan sir. vegan protein right the vegan yeah, yeah. Uh, food alternative so, food yeah alternative protein so uh, very interestingly i had uh, uh, worked on uh, a similar engagement on uh, arriving at the market sizings so the global market is something which is very uh, distinct and the indian market is very very distinct so interestingly the indian market is largely driven by the celebrities out there right and so much so that mm-hmm. uh, the recently uh, tata also has entered into it in fact that's the la- latest news yeah. on uh, the details so i think we will uh, I'll, i'll i'll connect with you offline and discuss on that um, uh, thing because uh, i may have some details which i can specifically share i mean since you mentioned on this particular point i can possibly okay. help on that as well uh, uh, because um, mm-hmm. the 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 first mr business analytics uh, which i i do consult with uh, they have come out with a specific study on uh, sizing the the industry on the the plant protein specifically on plant protein um, mapping the supplier side mapping the demand side uh-huh. and also the end user sectors so i'll i'll discuss with you separately on that okay thank you uh okay there were i think there were a few more questions i think i'm just running short of uh, looking at all these questions um there there are some very interesting questions which each of you have put in i'm i'm sorry it's going to take a minute or two more um Achita, okay, I will address your question. Uh, Ajit, you had asked for blood banks and blood donor. Uh, yes, uh, okay. Ajit, you had asked about blood banks and blood donors. Uh, I think uh, so. Here again, your question uh, you will have to see under which category. So the key is about identifying under what classification is it does it come under, and then we you, we can do it. I'll again maybe separately discuss with you and see if I can share some information for you uh, yeah. on that, Ajit. Okay. Um, hi, hi, hi. Someone is trying to speak, but someone is speaking separately also. So, if people can stay Hello? muted, it would be great. Hi, hi. Uh, can I call you in such just fifteen twenty minutes? Uh, no. I... Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would request people to stay muted, please, so that uh, we can take up some questions if required. And I'm just taking every question subsequently. and uh, yeah people uh one minute i'm i'm just leaving my mail id in case uh, there were a few questions which we are not able to address uh, we will discuss separately i'm just leaving my official mail id here uh, so uh, ajit we will connect on that uh, great nice speaking with you as a messaging uh, uh, here on the message kartik uh and good to see on your interest to become an angel investor i will i will definitely discuss with you uh kartik gunashekaran i'll discuss with you uh, uh gaurav yes apeda is a wonderful site especially on the um uh, the the food related products and uh, they provide some very interesting information there uh agriculture specifically yes uh agriculture and processed foods correct 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 you are right uh, there on that front i let me let me see if i'm missing any any particular point uh so uh 
Sri Vidya Bhavani Munaswami, you've asked about hotel where you can see allopathy, eyes clinics across. Uh, yes, I think there should be some data which is available because I remember that uh, the Ayush portal uh, provides some very interesting details. Uh, you should be able to find it. Uh, if you're not able to find, please mail me or message me. I'll, I'll try to help you with that. Uh, yeah, Terry Sri, you've discussed that. And Gaurav, yeah, good. Uh, nice to see that, you know, you're complimenting with some more details on that. Uh, Comscore, Comscore, I'm not too sure, Matthew, um, if it provides. Let me see what does Comscore do. I don't quite remember. It's been quite some time since I checked that. Comscore is more a media company. Maybe it's a little different. It's a media measurement. It's more on social media analytics. So I think, uh, Matthew, it may be a little different. So uh, that may not be the right one. Uh, Akshaya, you were asking about a listed company, closely to. Um, I think there should definitely be something possible. Uh, Mattel, I'm not too, I can, Akshaya, I can, I can check and I'll come back on it. I'm very sure there should be some companies which are there in that particular space. Uh, I will, I will check and come back on it. Uh, Vijay Kumar, ceiling fan products. Uh, yes, uh, there are some very interesting things which are possible. Uh, ceiling fan, just try to see what ca category it comes under. So it, it typically uh, can be classified as, uh, let's say, uh, 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 you know, a consumer durable or an uh, con uh, appliance, right? industry appliance. So uh, try to see under which category it would be classified under. Just give me a minute. I'll probably help you in which category it would be uh, classified as. Ceiling fan would be, ceiling fan would largely be classified as a, a small appliance, domestic or small appliance, domestic appliance or small appliance. So uh, coming to your uh, question, uh, Vijay Kumar Jaibal, you may want to look for a domestic uh, appliance. I think that's something you may want to focus on. Uh, that should be fine. Thank you. Uh, Gaurav, uh, yeah, did I miss any question? Gaurav, please, you may open up. Uh, Gaurav? Oh, Rohan has actually shared a uh, data for Akshay. Sorry, Akshay. Uh, Nazara Tech may have some data on kids entertainment. So thanks, guys. I'm very happy that, you know, each of us are helping people. So that's a good one. Uh, oh, okay. Gaurav has sent a message. Uh, how to fair play in a market and do the brand positioning which is done by uh, precise and legal. Uh, so Gaurav, uh, Jok, okay, let me read the question for people and then uh, I'll try to address that. Uh, uh, when you say about legal and compliance industry, I think the legal and compliance industry still falls under the service uh, industry. So that's what I would imagine. So uh, you will have to see which are the companies which are focused in that particular space. With regard to the fair play, um, uh, the, the only problem is if you look at uh, the product industry, you have something which is tangible. So you have a concept of MRP and then you say that you don't like, okay, this is a product. And uh, the product price, uh, let's say if uh, uh, the, we are discussing about the case of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, a fan or probably a mobile phone, you know that it's going to be 5,000 rupees or 10,000 rupees, 40,000. So which means there's a very clear idea on that. Whereas in, when it comes to service segment, it's going to be uh, challenging. Gaurav. So I don't think there's anything like a right and wrong answer to that. I would suggest that uh, it's it's better that uh, so which is where companies come out with the concept of a platform model, right? Where they say that um, if uh, I provide solution for ABC, I will probably give you um, or probably I'll charge you uh, $10 or 1000 rupees. So I would, I would recommend Gaurav, the more you move towards making your product tangible, uh, you're opening that market out and you're giving that more uh, in a very uh, open space, right? Or you, you're giving that information in a, in a very uh, simple, straightforward manner. I think that is where uh, companies like Vakil Search, Vakil Search, right? I think Vakil Search is a company which is specifically focused on uh, coming out with a, a service platform model where uh, you say that, you know, you want a particular detail, go ahead, uh, pay a particular subscription and then 
you go ahead and uh, reach that out. So you may want to focus on that. So uh, Gaurav, again, back to your question, you may want to see if it can be uh, uh, positioned in such a way that you would reduce dependency on that. So that is a, a very, uh, I hope I'm able to address your question there, Gaurav. Thanks, thanks for that. Um, I can see some, uh, it looks like the questions seem to come. I'm very happy about it. I'm quite excited on addressing as well. Rahul, yes, Rahul, please reach out to me and uh, I'd love to share my thoughts to you separately. I hope you have my email and uh, we'll discuss further. And uh, we'll connect on LinkedIn as well. Uh, yes, can, sir. Thank I, you. Uh, Arun, you have a question. Uh, Arun has asked a question on how do we, uh, how do we get market size for wealth management advisory? Uh, let me deliberate on that. And then you're seeing the market size has arrived and the general perception of the prior revenue. Okay. Which one should I uh, uh, Arun, I'll, I'll discuss with you. I'll, I'll definitely want to discuss with you and then I'll, I'll try to address that uh, on a one-to-one -one basis. Uh, Arun, uh, we'll, we'll discuss separately offline. And uh, a Sanket on your question on uh, market sizing of software as a service. Uh, yes, uh, uh, agri business. Uh, interestingly, agri business also is coming uh, to be a very, very new age space. Uh, you have to again see whether you want to classify your product as a agri tech business or probably a software business. So I think see uh, which of the way you want to position your product uh, so that you'd be in a better position to uh, classify it. I think that's a fundamental question I would like to put forth to you, Sanket. Would you want to classify your product to be a, a, a agri business venture or uh, are you an agri tech company or are you a tech company in agri agriculture? So just just try to focus on that and I'd love to, uh, you, you can probably take it up there. Uh, if you still have any questions, please let me know. I can address it subsequently. Uh, some of you have asked for my mail ID. I'll probably leave it here and uh, I'll, I'll take it up uh, with you on mail and call as well later. Uh, Rohan has another question. Uh, any tips for sizing verticals as market? Uh, okay. Logistics SaaS and construction SaaS. Uh, some specific example on that, Rohan, if you can open up. Uh, a logistics SaaS, I'm just trying to think. So it's more, again, a, a, a software product uh, for the logistics or construction industry, is it? Is something in that? Yeah, Vignesh. Um... For example, like Shibzi or uh, Fleetio. Um, so, so I was actually trying to find, I, I was trying to find the uh, sizing data for the SaaS, but I could find the overall logistics market data, but I couldn't find specifically for any software services or. Okay. So uh, um, here, here again, uh, you will have to see uh, when you look at the market size itself, so who would be the users and who would be the customers? I think you will have to do that demarcation there and then you can slowly uh, uh, try to get that covered because um, I would say that you would be kind of disrupting the market, right? In the sense, uh, because largely it's been a very clear, uh, unorganized market. And then you're trying to uh, disrupt the market in some way. So I would say you'll have to deliberate on that and work on it accordingly. Uh, I think I'll, I'll definitely want to do a little bit of review myself. I will also review on that and I'll, I can definitely address a little a bit further uh, once I understand, uh, because uh, I'm quite, quite uh, sector agnostic. So I've done uh, study or research on uh, the Indian PPE industry. I've done studies on the Indian chemical industry. I've done study on Indian uh, Indian or um, APAC and global uh, the food industries, um, alcoholic beverage and whatnot. So industry and segmentation is not something which is a challenge, but I'd still love to hear a little bit further on that as well. I, I In fact, for my uh, own knowledge in terms of, uh, it, so that I can give you some um, realistic uh, detail on how you'll want to go further. I, I will definitely uh, discuss with you on that uh, separately. Is that okay? Is that okay, Rohan? We'll connect yeah, separately thanks, on that. Thanks, uh, okay, Shelian, Sh Shelian uh, Raj has a question. I'm not sure what Um, yes, Shelian, we can discuss on that. 
uh i will i will reach out to you we'll discuss on that i i can definitely help you with that so i'll give you some pointers so interestingly uh mental health and wellness as a concept itself is new to the indian market but yes there is a, a lot of uh, uh prominence and uh, information which is coming here and uh, which is where so so uh, immediate question i can think of for you uh shelgen is uh, you may want to focus on uh uh suicides as a metric right you know like you no know, it, it's a little unfortunate but again so that can be a small metric or data point so with regard to the mental health and wellness so that can be one of the indicators and uh, you can look at uh, health and uh, so just try to pick on those specific points and then we can look at identifying probably you can also look at different trends on uh, number of people getting admitted or number of health uh, related illnesses uh which have been reported in india or like you know like publicly available that also can be another metric uh number of new institutions or so here in your case shelian you may also want to look at uh, the ngos and different bodies which are fo- focusing on it because they while you're building a product uh, these ngos are building a community uh, to support the ecosystem uh, see if they have some data which you can dabble and look upon uh, because both of you are are working towards the same uh, customer segment but the aims and objectives are different uh, but i'm very sure they uh, will also likely have some data points so i would think that you may also want to approach that aspects what are the ngos which are coming out with those areas and also another aspect you may want to review is uh, what kind of uh, mental or health or wellness services are being introduced in uh established hospitals so for instance take a case like your apollo or fortis or any of these uh, hospitals uh do they have or are they introducing any uh, uh team or probably are they recruiting that particular set of people or um, are they coming out with a new division so i would think all those are also indicators for you with regard to uh, i mean it's not necessarily market size itself but then you will get some more points which will help in putting your case together because uh more than you presenting the market size it's more about you pressing uh, presenting that product market fit right i mean like towards that objective so don't look at this as a stand alone objective in fact i i think i forgot to mention this uh this entire idea about market size growth cgr and, and all of it is more about showcasing the ability of the growth of the industry and uh the product so that both are aligned for the future that's about it i hope that is useful to you shelly and i'll definitely uh discuss and probably i'll i'll uh, share something and ajit has already shared some very interesting point uh saying that you know great info in uh, uh economic times and roi yeah specifically on that data privacy great uh and you can very well uh, look at the international data metrics so look at uh, how the global markets have evolved so that can be another point you may want to review and uh, interestingly uh, they they present some lovely data and data points also okay sure sure shelin uh, love to connect uh, and discuss more as well uh, any further question i i really hope uh, we have done justice to the time and session i know um, market sizing market research and all this is a, a very fascinating topic for me and i can speak on and on and on for ever uh, but i hope we've been able to do justice to this and uh, if there's any further question more i'd love to connect and discuss with you all uh, separately as well so if that is all for the day uh, i think we already overshot by 30 40 minutes uh, but most importantly i hope uh, uh, it's useful to you that's what matters uh, any any uh, any closing remarks uh, if not probably i'll hand it over back to uh, pramila and uh, manoranjani oh Hello, sir. The session okay. was very informative. Thank you so much, sir, for your time. Thank you, everyone. Shall we wrap up the meeting? Thank you. Thank you, everyone.